葛诗兰落，佳兰苗艺，钟离玉秀，银锐天纵，横遍江涛，折角菜鸡。先醉心东瀛美术，探手珠兰，复转游西竹列邦，卓竹秦家，归之为泰。使见者谨行，惠之难心，而须眉春见，学通古今，弥天四海，剖析秋毫，退藏于密。知以无事消远，但托偕行天下，呼啸学林，鼓上分巢。间谍仙俊，世人春谢。各师面壁哈佛，破壁卖马，转坛耶鲁，桃李银枝。学海浩瀚，海浩瀚望者心叹，普。刀陪莫作积年，然唐武宏阔，未得寸进。去下风广，养得文感。于今秋邀约先达同门后秀，结集云端，称德自尽。十方心目会风者，何共赴兰亭乎？闵侯金熙老人拜起。
A tribute to the inimitable Phyllis Granoff. I have never had a dearer friend whom I admire so much. Phyllis has been an influence, mentor, confidant, and supporter for nearly half of my life and has shaped my understanding of Indian art and religion in the most profound and valuable of ways. My gratitude to her for her generous sharing of her knowledge and language skills is boundless, as is my delight in our friendship. This is Sonia Ree Mace of Cleveland, Ohio. I have some wonderful photos of Phyllis from 1979 when she visited studios of artists working in Delhi, including one of beautiful Phyllis with iconic artist Mira Mukherjee. I first encountered Phyllis as a larger than life legend when I was a graduate student at Harvard in the 1990s studying early Indian sculpture. Often, John Rosenfield would stop in to promote Chandra's office for a chat. Inevitably, the conversation turned to Phyllis Granoff as the most brilliant student John had ever had, a genius who could drink and swear like a sailor. Pramod would chuckle in assent and praise her understanding of Indian languages, religions, texts, and art. They would trumpet the merits of her dissertation on Harsha and then drum into me the importance of learning languages like Phyllis. Imagine how covered over in gratitude I was when, thanks to an introduction from Bob Brown, Phyllis invited me to participate in a conference at McMaster University in 2004, where I first presented my research on the image of Pallavarna at Kashambi. I believe her support and encouragement of young scholars have elevated the field to a much greater extent than is generally recognized. She shares her knowledge with unbounded generosity and provides opportunities for young scholars to present and publish their work, thus setting them on their way. Phyllis is also a marvelous curator. She has an eye that recognizes greatness regardless of the period, medium, or subject. Her 2009 exhibition, Victorious Ones, Jane Images of Perfection at the Rubin Museum of Art, was a landmark in the study and presentation of the arts of Jainism. I was honored beyond words that she asked me to work with her on the catalog, which remains a constant resource at my fingertips. In 2014, Phyllis and Koichi spent blissful days with me poring over the palm leaf manuscripts in the Cleveland Museum of Art. She read the pages, discovered meaningful and beautiful correlations between text and images in the early 12th century Prajnaya Paramita, Gandavyuha, and Pancharaksha manuscripts in the collection. Much of this work has been published in the special volume of the journal Religions that I had the honor of co-editing with Phyllis, seeing and reading art and literature in pre-modern Indian religions. She also completely re-identified over a dozen Jain palm leaves from the 13th century, figured out which pages belong together, and translated their colophons. Then, in the evenings, we all enjoyed Prabod Chandra's Manhattan's recipe below. Phyllis is so amazing. She even read the Oriya inscriptions on the museum's Lavanyavati folio with fire and rain austerities and a three-legged yogi. Mother to boys and dogs, lover of all things awesome, with boundless energy, the biggest heart and the keenest mind, Phyllis is one of my favorite people on earth. Hi Phyllis, this is Yunmi. I am very happy to be included in this video for you. Um, when I was working at Yale, you were always supportive. You came to all my talks and then your comments were really, really encouraging to me. Well, although I am working in Korea now, I still miss you a lot. So please come to Korea anytime. After the COVID, we can travel together. Um, well, I wish you a very successful conference and see you at the conference. Bye-bye. When I first heard of Phyllis, and it was in, when I visited the Deccan College in 1979, people were still speaking about the young Sanskrit prodigy who uh, used to work uh, in Sanskrit uh, with uh, one of the greatest pandits uh, of Deccan College, uh, Srinivas Shastri. Later, she published uh, uh, she published uh, her groundbreaking book on on uh, on late Vedanta, uh, uh, 
which is the result of this work that is, a, which was an annotated translation of uh, Sri Harsha, uh, Kandana Kanda Katya. Uh, however, I think I met uh, Phyllis much later in a couple of conferences and when she became the editor of the uh, Journal of Indian Philosophy in the early 90s, she asked me to join the editorial board. And I think this is how our friendship became, started, I, so more or less uh, 30 years ago. So we've been friends for decades, and I hope that our friendship will continue for the decades to come. Uh, it is very appropriate that uh, this conference uh, is dedicated to the topic of uh, religious biography. It is indeed uh, Phyllis and her husband Koichi Shinohara that have made a, a, a foundational contribution in, uh, in this area. It is thanks to their work both as authors and as editors that at least people in my generation uh, have become aware what a, of what a major source uh, uh, the religious biographies are not only for, uh, of course, for religion, but also as a major source for, um, for uh, the culture and civilization of uh, South and East Asia. So, um, Phyllis, if you're watching this, I want to thank you for your uh, friendship, and um, which I much appreciate. And as I said, I hope our friendship will last for much, much longer. Dr. Granoff, a lot has changed since this photo was taken at McMaster University 20 years ago. One thing that has not is my gratitude to you. How extraordinary it is that I would have the chance to study under your direction, to count you as the most encouraging and patient and sometimes very honest of mentors. You not only showed me what it is to be a world-class researcher, but you transformed the way I imagine a good life. And for that, I am so thankful. You are the greatest of researchers. You are the most generous of teachers. You are the most uh, kind of mentors. You're also a beloved colleague, right? A person who brings people together. You are uh, a brilliant partner and you are a parent. You are all of those things. I will not be, but every day I will hold you as the model of the kind of person I wish that I could be. Congratulations on your retirement, Phyllis. Oh, I feel so lucky to have had the opportunity to have studied with you. Your rare intelligence, your fierce dedication to your students, your earthy <laughs> sense of humor has really transformed my life and the field. Thank you for all that you and Koichi have done to train me and my fellow graduate students. Let this be one of the many celebrations of the brilliance that is you. To you, Phyllis. Phyllis and Koichi, first, a hearty congratulations to you both. There is so much to celebrate about your lives and careers. The first time we met was in Hamilton at McMaster University, and you treated me like a friend from the start and with far more kindness than I deserved. After your move to Yale, I fondly, re fondly recall many evenings at your house, eating excellent food, playing ball with your dogs in the living room, and listening to music and talking and talking and talking, and perhaps a little bit of drinking. And I, it was always so hard to make the decision to finally leave and go home. I wish I had more pictures of those gatherings, but I was always having such a good time. I never paused to take any, but somehow this one that I took sticks with me as capturing the spirit of one of those late evenings. I always came away from those events so energized and with a mind ablaze with ideas and things to pursue. I've learned so much from you both over the years, and that goes without saying, um, and perhaps I bugged you more than you would have liked with a question about this or that, but more importantly, you modeled what it means to be a friend and a colleague and how to be the most gracious of hosts. Thanks for all your support and inspiration over the years. Let me end by saying that doing this as a video somehow just doesn't seem right. 
You've always demonstrated the magic that happens when people are brought together to interact, share ideas, and establish lifelong friendships. And for that, I will be forever thankful to you both. Congratulations again. Congratulations, Phyllis, on your retirement from Yale, from me and all your friends at McMaster University, where you continue to be fondly remembered. Thanks to you, our library still has some unique and amazing resources for the study of Indian religions. Now, if this were normal circumstances, I'd be recording this message from my office in University Hall, which used to be your office, and I think it has a lot fewer books in it now. Our connection goes back a long way. The conference that you and Koichi organized here at McMaster on the moment of death was one of the first at which I gave a paper just after my PhD. I remember it was in October of 20, 2001, right after September 11th when people were still a bit nervous to fly. It was my first time visiting McMaster, a place where I've now been teaching for 16 years and it was the first of many Phyllis and Koichi conferences with their unique mix of serious scholarship, academic gossip, and plenty of good food and drink. So thank you for your many years of hospitality and constantly stimulating discussion. It's been an amazing ride. Thank you again for, on behalf of all who've been carried up into your circle, and please enjoy your retirement. Hi Phyllis, this is Bethany. I can't believe you're retiring, congratulations. I am honored to be able to give you a parting message. Um, you, you have taught me and given me so much as it is hard to begin. I met you in uh, 2005, 2006 school year. Uh, when I was a sophomore and I went into your Indian philosophy class and there you were with a, a string at the table to start the lesson, always remember that. Um, and that was just the beginning of a very special relationship with you. I always remember how you said that you were always convinced by different arguments at different times because you could see the merit in each of them. And that appreciation for the diversity of perspectives and to see the world not in black and white is something that I took with me to this day and has, has made me a better, a better person because of it. And of course, I'll always remember your, your warmth and your openness, that openness and accessibility and kind of excitement that you, that you gave to my academic career is something that I always talk about. Sometimes I, sometimes I do interviews for Yale applicants and when they ask about what the professors are like, I talk about you. Um, so thank you for everything. I just, um, I am excited for the next chapter of your life, maybe a more relaxing one but I, um, I just can't say enough about how much you gave to me and I'm sure to everyone else who's gonna be, um, gonna be giving you farewell messages. All the best, congratulations, bye. Phyllis was one of my first professors at Yale. I took her freshman seminar, Karma Cures and Crimes, which served as my introduction to the rich philosophical traditions of the Indian subcontinent and sparked a lifelong interest in Buddhist philosophy. I went on to take every class that Professor Granoff offered, drawn not only to the subject matter, but also to Phyllis as an instructor. Her courses pushed me to think in a way I had never imagined. She supported us as students to find our own meaning in these ancient texts while serving as an endless source of knowledge. I still remember reading Nagarjuna's Proof of Emptiness for the first time in Phyllis's course on Indian philosophy and the impact that it had on me. To this day, it has shaped how I think about the world. Phyllis was able to make incredibly complex theories accessible in a way that pushed me to want to learn more. Professor Granoff helped to make my first trip to the Himalayas possible by securing funding for a summer study abroad program on art and architecture in Himachal Pradesh and Ladakh. It was through this opportunity that I fell deeply in love with the Himalayas and developed a connection with the region and community that has been lifelong. It is because of Professor Granoff and the opportunities that she provided that I found the work I am most passionate about. Just as importantly, Phyllis served as a support system and mentor. She was invested in me as a person and saw my individual potential. I struggle with anxiety, especially in academic settings, but was only ever supported by Phyllis. When I struggled to finish my senior thesis, it was Phyllis who provided the advice and emotional support that allowed me to finally complete it. Her belief in me allowed me to believe in myself. Even after my time at Yale and outside the realm of religious studies, I've been able to look to Phyllis for advice and support. She's not only an endless font of knowledge and an incredible professor, but is a mentor in the truest sense. 
Thank you, Phyllis, for opening a whole new world to me and being there to support me as I came to find my place in it. Phyllis taught many of the first courses I ever took in religious studies while I was an undergraduate at Yale University. Phyllis was also the person who really encouraged me, based on my interest in Indian religious traditions, to study Sanskrit, uh, which I was not at all excited to do because the only other language I had studied at that point in time was French, and I was terrible at French, and I thought Sanskrit would be way harder, and it was, but I also fell in love with Sanskrit. And because of my love of Sanskrit, I fell in love with studying languages in general, which has now led me to study 10 different languages over the course of my lifetime. Phyllis also encouraged me to do study abroad programs during the summers in between semesters. And so because of her, I studied in India and Sri Lanka, where I got to see Indian religious traditions where they were sort of practiced more regularly on the ground than they are in the United States. And my time uh, abroad in India and Sri Lanka also unearthed within me a love of discovering other cultures and being immersed in other cultures. And so because of that, after I finished my time as an undergraduate, I became a Peace Corps volunteer. And I attribute that largely to Phyllis pushing me outside of my comfort zone to do those study abroad programs. And so when I think about Phyllis's influence on my life, I think about her as someone who taught me to be a uh, sort of wide-minded when it comes to thinking about the birth of religious traditions in the world. I think about her as someone who encouraged me to realize that uh, within all faith traditions, there is this way of being critical in our thinking. So Phyllis, thank you for your influence on my life. Thank you for being such a positive presence in my life. And congratulations on your retirement. There is so much one could say about Phyllis. She's a dynamo who combines an intellectual restlessness and endless curiosity with seemingly inexhaustible energy and sheer brilliance. She started out seriously pursuing Japanese art history, yet somehow became a trailblazer in Indian literature and philosophy with major contributions in everything from medieval Jain and Buddhist thought to contemporary Orissan literature. But on a more personal note, it is no exaggeration to say that I owe my professional career to Phyllis, who, along with her husband Koichi, offered me my first job at McMaster University. Very quickly, Phyllis became much more than a comrade in arms. Phyllis and Koichi became dear friends, beloved travel companions. They were there for our wedding, for the birth of our kids, for birthdays and holidays, and just about any other excuse to get together and eat and gab. Phyllis's conviviality is not divorced from her scholarship. She approaches scholarship as something done within a community and nurturing that community, that wide circle of friends that she has brought together over many years is part and parcel of her intellectual life. I'm very much honored to be a small part of that community. Congratulations, Phyllis. I had already benefited a lot from Phyllis' great work as a student, which explains how excited and nervous I was when I got to know I could work under her at Yale as a visiting scholar. I still remember when I first arrived in New Haven, Phyllis and Koichi came to show me around campus and take me to get groceries. Although that was the first time we met, we talked a lot and it felt just like family. I was truly impressed that such knowledgeable and prolific scholars could be so humble, gracious, and fun. And I think that special bond between us was probably created then and has been there ever since. I can't remember how many interesting and fruitful discussions and great laughs we had together over the countless delicious meals she cooked or on our way to different theaters. As an accomplished linguist and a master of South Asian religions and arts, Phyllis has given me not only valuable academic guidance in these areas, but also many useful life advices that I have taken to heart and will always benefit from. It has been such a privilege to have known her and worked with her. And over the past years, no matter the time difference between us, Phyllis has always been there with her quickest responses, wisest words, and constant patience whenever I reached out for help. Her passion and seriousness for teaching and research, her care and concern for students, colleagues, and friends are things that I've always tried to learn in my own career. Thank you so much, dear Phyllis, for being such a great inspiration in my life and for all the help, support, and encouragement you have always given to me. 
Happy retirement! Congratulations on this new phase of our life, and enjoy the wonderful journey ahead of you. I've known both of them since I was 20 years old, uh, and I didn't finish my PhD till I was almost 30. So um, they've basically been surrogate parents to me for my most of my, my adult life, and. There's a lot of ways that they, I could talk forever about how they influenced me intellectually, but when I think back to the time we spent together, mostly I'm just really grateful for all the fun we had. Um, dog sitting, um, Puffin and Sweep and Rusty, those were my first dogs, and um, all of the post-talk meals and drinks and, and conferences that we did. Um, so I just really miss spending time with you guys, and um, I'm just really thankful for the time that we got to spend together um, and I miss you all and I um, look forward to spending more time with you with Benny in the future. Congratulations! Uh, I'm very happy to be part of this event that celebrates Phyllis. She has been my advisor and mentor for many years since Yale University and I've always been in complete awe from the way Phyllis was able to work, from the depth and the pace with which uh, Phyllis worked. I consider myself incredibly lucky to have been able to see the excellence and perfection that Phyllis has exhibited in nearly everything she undertook, from um, writing a small chapter to developing a new course. Phyllis also has been an incredibly generous and caring mentor, and I'm uh, incredibly grateful uh, to her for a million emails, conversations, and suggestions that over and over again would open, would open my eyes to the things that I had never thought of before. Um, I'm also very grateful for the many hours um, reading texts in uh, Sanskrit and Prakrit uh, with Phyllis uh, because, I mean, these were the moments of complete joy and not particularly because we were able to see Phyllis's brilliance again in how she was able to comprehend the most intricate and sophisticated and complicated ideas and thoughts of Indian medieval thinkers. And I don't think I'll find the right words to convey just how much I appreciate and respect Phyllis uh, but I very much hope that she feels our collective love today and uh, uh, know that she has inspired so many students and scholars across the world. And uh, um, I hope that she can really enjoy that uh, and uh, have just a great day today. <laughs> Phyllis, John Strong here, long time no see. Congratulations on your retirement. You will enjoy it. I can speak as one who retired a few years ago. It is great. Take care. Bye-bye. I found myself uh, you know, thinking about Phyllis in so many ways. I come late in, into her life, and it's been just one of the great pleasures of the last several years to have been able to see that happen as she set up shop in Yale. And there's so much to talk about. Of course, I'd heard of her for years and years. But this one picture shows you Phyllis giving a talk at uh, a Yale conference, was, which was on bhakti themes and performance, about uh, Jain dramas. And she's talking about puppets and puppeteers. And at the very bottom right corner, you see Phyllis. So the puppet is in the background. That's what she's projecting for us. And she's very seriously reading her paper, which she has prepared, of course. Phyllis needs to prepare nothing, but she prepares even so. But there she is in the corner of the slide playing the role of Surdas. So <laughs> she herself is a witness to what we're seeing on the screen. She's just looking straight forward. It's not that she's blind. It's just that she's not paying attention to the theatricality of it at all. She's just being Phyllis. I loved it when I came back across that picture of this conference in 2019. It seemed to me to say so much in closing that it's been amazing for us, an ordinary mortal to make contact with someone like myself, to make contact with someone who really is not an ordinary mortal, but who hides her unordinariness in a wonderful package of the ordinary that makes it somehow accessible to us all. 
So thank you, Phyllis, and thank you for giving me a chance to talk. Happy retirement, Phyllis. Of all these years, you mean so much to me, my career, and also not just me, myself, but also my student that you oversaw when she first taught at Yale. So a hearty thanks to you for all these um, generous help and guidance. And I still remember um, how you taught me um, that we should, as a scholar, we all need to have some uh, um, physical endurance. So the way you um, uh, make it that way is to um, get up in early in the morning and dip into the swimming pool at five. Um, so you provide that example, I'm afraid I've never been able to uh, keep up with, but at least um, it shows what it takes to be a great scholar, that you need to have the kind of discipline and it, that you need to have that kind of will. And that expands the long career that you've had and the productive career, what it is. Um, so um, I still have uh, to um, find a way of getting up early in the morning and at 5 a.m. and uh, be like you. So, um, and I hope you keep your daily routine um, even after retirement. I think you still will have a very productive career ahead. Hi, I'm delighted to have the opportunity to speak briefly about how I have come to know Phyllis. Several years ago, I traveled with Phyllis and Koichi on what I think of as the Buddhist bus. For three straight weeks, we traveled around the perimeter of Xinjiang to visit many antique sites. When you travel for three weeks on a bus, more often than not, for more than 12 hours per day on the bus with only brief bathroom breaks behind the dunes, you get to really know people. And I can say from that trip that the three most extraordinary people I met were Phyllis and Koichi, um, and also Wang Binghua, the distinguished Chinese archeologist. To broach a more personal topic, and I've thought about whether I should broach this or not. When my partner of 25 years died quite unexpectedly in Los Angeles a few years ago, I called Phyllis um, and she was on the next plane. No pleas were entered on my part. Um, she gave no arguments to me. Um, she's there when you need her to help you reconcile yourself to the world, as is Koichi. They're a reason they are together and it's plain to see. These are among the most vital people I know and they have immeasurably enriched my life. Um, because of this.